So this video is specifically targeted at the, the roof structure and I want to work through it very slowly so that you can see how the roof actually unfolds. It is very important to read the information and interpret it and convert that information into the drawing that we have there. So at the moment our existing part here is the wall which you have here right which is now 2740 divided and that part over there so what's going to happen next is that you're only going to see this part of your roof and you must keep in mind that that piece there tells you that the roof is going to go like that there should it be the case that your roof or your wall looks like that and your line would be on this side, your, your stop line, your brake line, you know that your roof truss is going to go like that. That's very important to understand. Okay? So if we're going to start with the roof, the first thing that we are going to do is to look at this wall plate. 114 by 38 is the wall plate. Now if you scale that 114 that's going to give you 6 millimeters if you divide 114 by, um, by 20 and the 38 is going to give you 2 millimeters so that's actually 6 by 2 and that's the first thing that I'm going to do and I'm just going to take that away I'm going to go up here this like that and I'm going to measure 2 millimeters like that there and then I'm going to draw my line inside and then I'm going to measure six millimeters like that there. That's where it's going to be and then I'm going to so now I'm going to darken that wall plate that I've drawn. That is the first part which will be for the roof structure. And then of course you must hatch it and the proper hatching for for wood is a crossing like that there. What I would suggest further you do is that you are going to extend this line, the top of the wall plate and you're going to extend the bottom part of the wall plate. Let's for argument's sake that you are only going to draw that entire roof against that line there. So you might stop it against the line, it's very important and that's what we are going to do. Just keep in mind that later on that bottom line is going to become the ceiling so in fact you can draw that dark already because that is your ceiling. We are going to put the branding inside of this space here which lines up with the wall plate. So the next item we're going to launch on here is going to be the roof truss and that's a very important component because we're going to have the tie beam here and then we're going to have the, the rafter running like that and then we're going to have the overhang here. That is the same type of wood that we use for the wall plate but this time it's not flat, it's going to be upright so you are going to see 6 millimeters. That 6 millimeters will be going like that here for the tie beam and for the roof rafter. Let's do that. So it's important to understand that the roof has an angle so we're going to look at what the angle is so I'm going to go to my notes and I'm going to find that my angle is 20 degree roof pitch so I'm going to highlight that 20 degrees then I'm going to go to my protractor and I'm going to put my protractor on here there's my protractor and the protractors center point is going to go onto that line there. Please take note onto that line there. So I'm going to move that protractor point on that uh, top right hand corner of my my wall plate. I'm going to count 0, 10 and there's my 20 going to be and then I'm going to draw a line from that point through the 20 degree point until it touches that break line there. But I am going to return it this side because that's going to be my, for my overhang. And then 
I must inflate it and I said that piece of wood is going to be 6 millimeters and this would be the standard measurement which you are going to use. So there's my 6. Here I'm drawing my first part in. Which is my tie beam and I'm going to darken that tie beam immediately. Right? And then I'm going to do another 6 along the rafter which is 6 here and a 6 over here. And then I'm going to draw a line that forms my rafter like that. There, there I'm going to draw it. Right? I'm going to keep it faint at this moment. Then I'm going to go back to my notes and I will find in my notes that it says here that there is an overhang of 240. Now if you take 240 and you divide 240 by 20 you are going to get 12 as an answer. So that means from the wall on the outside you are going to have an overhang of 12 millimeters like that. Okay, that's very important. It is a horizontal measurement from the wall and then you're going to cut that off on there. So I'm going to draw a dark line immediately that cuts off my, my rafter there. I can now darken that line over there for my rafter stop and my rafter's bottom and that ties in with my tie beam like that there. Alright then on top of my rafter I'm going to have the following and I want you to read this that I'm going to highlight there 30 millimeter corrugated roof sheeting on 75 by 50 per lines at 1 meter and 60 or 1060 millimeters center to center that's a very important statement so what we need to do is to scale down all of these dimensions that you will see there. Let's do that quickly. After I've done that, you will find that the 30 uh, divided by 20 actually gives me 1.5. So I'm going to round that off to 2 millimeters. That's going to be 2 millimeters. Then that's for the sheeting. And that will be on the per lines, which is the piece of wood which is 4 for the 75 and 3 for the 50 and the per lines are 1060 millimeter center to center apart and that scale down would be 53 that's very important so what I'm going to do is I'm going to draw that piece of wood first in and then I'm going to put on the corrugated sheeting Alternatively, when you want to draw a little faster, you can actually put on the sheeting uh, four millimeters away. So that piece of wood is going to be looking like this. That's going to be four and that's going to be three. And the sheeting will then be on top of that. This part here will be on the truss of six. So I'm going to put in the sheeting four millimeters above this uh, rafter here and that sheeting will be two millimeters uh, lines apart to indicate that let me show you what I actually mean by that I'm going to take that away and then on a slant I'm going to measure four millimeters here and I'm going to measure another four millimeters here then I'm going to draw that four millimeter line like that there. I'm just going to make sure it's nice and straight. Four millimeters. I'm going to draw that. Just faint first. Besides that, I'm now going to draw, measure another two millimeters there and another two millimeters there so that I can have my sheeting which is going to be what I'm going to draw now. So I want you to keep in mind what I'm doing. So that is my sheeting. 
My sheeting always goes slightly further, so you can cut it off anywhere as long as if it's slightly further than this actual part, which is the end of my rafter. So I'm going to cut it off there, just slightly longer, and then I'm going to draw that line, both of them darken. There I'm going to draw that, and I'm going to draw that dark as well. So that's my sheeting. So you will find that my sheeting is actually suspended in the air. So I will have to put in the pearl lines here in between. And how do I do that? I'm going to turn my T-square or I can take any other straight edge like that and keep it on a slant like that there. Or if you want to simply want to use your T-square like that and take your set square and run it on there like that. So when you're going to do your pearl line, you're going to start on that corner there, right? On that corner, but you're going to move it slightly in. So what I want you to do first to extend this part like that, and then do your slant like that. And then this point here is very important. That is where your pearl line, first line is going to be. And then you're going to measure away from that three millimeters, which is going to be there. And then I'm going to do that again. To make sure that it's perfect. And draw that there. That I can cross now as my etching. And I know for a fact that the distance away is 53 center to center. So now I'm going to... Wherever the crossing is, I'm going to measure 53 away there. So there's my 53 and I'm going to dot. That's my center. So 3 being my size of my pearl lines width, I'm going to go a millimeter and a half that side and a millimeter and a half this side to give me the 3. And then I'm going to keep in the same way like I did with the first one and do the line in between the sheeting and the rafter there and the line in between the sheeting and the rafter there and then I'm just going to cross it over as my hatching there and that's all you need to do you only need to see we only need to see two pearl lines and the gap you do get a mark for the pearl lines and a mark for the gap there we are now going to proceed to the next component which is your fascia board and your gutter attached to it. So let's do the gutter first. The gutter is 200 by 20 millimeters which is going to be looking like this. A la it's a, a piece of board. It is down by 200 and when you divide 200 by 20 it's going to give you a mere 10. From year to year it's going to be 10 and that is going to be 2 millimeters if you take 20 divided by 20 that's going to give you 2 millimeters so I'm going to put that in so the first thing that I'm going to do is I'm going to measure 2 millimeters away like that and that end serves as my first line and that as my second line I can however draw my top line anywhere away so if I perhaps choose to draw it like that there and I'm going to darken it immediately and now I'm going to measure 10 millimeters down here's my 10 and then I'm going to put that 10 in there and now I'm going to darken my fascia board like that there that's my fascia board 10 millimeters down and 2 millimeters in width. That's my fascia board. And then we're going to go to my gutter. The gutter reads as follows 150 by 100 gutter. And I can tell you the gutter is going to look like that. So this part here is 150, and that part there is 100. And if you divide the 150 and the 100, you are going to get 
8 millimeters here and you're going to get 5 millimeters along the side. So I'm going to draw that, that 5 and 8 in. So the first thing that I'm going to do is to start off with a line here. Um, preferably I can do this the bottom any distance uh, away vertically so let me do a line like that there and then I'm going to draw another line like that and then all I'm going to do is measure 5 on this line here so there's my 5 and I'm going to measure 8 on this line here there's my 8 and now I can draw that there so I just need to ensure that that is 5 as well so now I can darken it down 5 down 5 and across is my 8 ok that is my gutter that I have there ok perfect so we can highlight that we've done the gutter now we're going to come back here to my barge boards now you will see that the barge board is 300 by 75 by 10. We only need the 300 to be scaled down. And if we say 300 divided by 20, that is going to give you 15. Now it's going to have a drop of 15. So how do you put in your barge boards? Let me show you on the drawing. So your barge board is actually in line with this top part of your sheeting right and you can take it one millimeter away from the gutter here from the end of the gutter so I'm going to do that one millimeter away so that's the top point of my barge board and that now needs to drop so when you are going to drop it by 15 as we said 300 divided by 20 remember you have to measure 15 from this this top point down and 15 is going to be there and then all you are going to do now if you do a 15 there you're going to do another 15 here this there so that you can align it and then it's going to run from here back that way and it's going to stop against the wall here like that that is going to be in line with my top part of my sheeting and my end is going to be a millimeter away from my gutter always these are all standard measurements okay and there is my barge board let's now take a look at the ceiling the ceiling is basically 10 millimeter ceiling board on 38 by 38 branding we have the thickness already we just need to take this 460 center to center so we need to say 460 divided by 20 and that's going to give us 23 we're going to write in 23 there so let me show you how to put that in so the first one you can put anywhere I'm going to put my first one right here and remember it's 38 by 38 meaning 2 by 2 so that's already 2 millimeters, and I'm just going to have a square of 2 there. So there is my branding. My branding is a square little block like that there. But now we need another one. And the distance you are going to move away from the first one center to center is going to be 23 as I've calculated. And now I'm going to measure from the center 23. And there is my middle. I'm going to go a millimeter to the one side and a millimeter to the other side. And all I'm going to do is draw that line in and that line in there and then cross it like that there. And there I will get the mark for the branding and the mark for the correct spacing. You only need to draw two to be able to get that specific mark. Once you're done with that, Please don't forget that this beam filling must go up. So you are going to draw that line dark till there. Now right down. And you are going to draw that line dark. That's your beam filling and it goes right up until, until under the sheeting that you have there. And you can darken that 
line there as well. That is your beam filling. And then remember that once you have completed that, you need to hatch this top part. So I'm going to just start hatching it two millimeters apart, like that, perfectly. And the hatching just stops there above the lintels. Then of course learners, uh, should you be required to put in a post like that there, very importantly I want to show you this very valuable information, piece of information I'm going to explain to you now. Those posts, which are the queen posts, they are equally spaced apart. These are four equal spaces, so that four must be kept in mind. So what you need to do to be able to get that in there, you have to go back because this spans across your house, you have to go back to your, your floor plan and then you have to measure because your truss runs like that according to the cutting line. You're going to measure the outside wall to the outside wall. So outside wall to outside wall and there you're going to get 104 and I'm going to say 104 as you have it on my calculator and I'm going to scale it up times 50 and that's going to give you 5 meter 200 then divide that by 20 and you're going to get 260 and because the, the 260 is the span across for the whole house According to a scale of 1 is to 20, you're going to divide it by 4. And remember, I spoke about the 4 because that's equally spaced. And you're going to get 65. Right. Keep that in mind. So now we're going to go back to our drawing. And you're going to measure from the center here of the wall, 65, 60 plus 5. And you're going to dot that there. Now... You are going to take your Z square and your T square and you're going to draw a faint line because that line forms the middle of my queen post which is the similar piece of wood that we have here which is basically 6. Then you're going to go 3 millimeters on this side and 3 millimeters on that side which gives you 6. So I'm going to draw a hard line there and a hard line here to get my 6 in there. And that's how you get a queen post. Remember that process that I explained now. Should they not give you the overhang, I would also suggest that you follow the valuable information now, is that you measure this overhang here. If they don't give it to you, you measure that. And in this case, you're going to measure, and that will give you 5 millimeters once again. You clear, you say 5 times the 50, which scales it up, and then you divide that by 20, and that will give you 12.5. Remember, we had 240 divided by 5, and that gave us the 12 space from here to there. That was your 12 that we saw there. All right. So, basically, that... Uh, concludes the roof and I just want to recap just remember 2 millimeters 6 by 2 that is going to be 6 this is going to be 6 3 and 3 that is 6 that is 4 that is 2 so 2 6 6 4 2 that's how you can go into any exam knowing that this you will have to calculate the gutter of course is 5 along the side and 8 here. It's a standard measurement. The fascia board is 2 width and 10 millimeters in length. So I can write the 10 there. And remember the barge boards will probably be 15 like that down. Um, to put it here. 15. That's 1.5. And it goes slightly by a millimeter further than the gutter. So that the gutter is hidden from that side. And uh, you just close it up at the bottom. It drops to 15. Okay. 
and don't forget to draw this up and hatch as well and that hopefully will uh, explain to you in detail how the roof should be done please keep in mind that the roof structure is a standard component if you follow this you will be successful in every attempt in the exam or any other assessment that requires you to draw the roof structure